Forces can be a push or a pull. Forces explain the motion of objects. Whether an object is stationary, travelling at a constant speed, accelerating or decelerating depends on the size and direction of the forces acting on it. Forces can also change the direction or shape of an object. Forces are measured in Newtons, or capital N for short. Some forces can be measured using a Newton meter. For example, if we pulled along this box with the Newton meter, we would see that it takes nearly six Newtons of force in order to pull that box. So our pull force here, we can measure using the Newton meter. Forces can be grouped into two different groups. Contact forces, and objects have to be touching to experience a contact force, or non-contact forces, the force acts at a distance and the objects aren't touching. For contact forces, examples include friction, because two objects have to be touching and rubbing against each other to experience friction. Drag, because this is a force whereby particles are pushing backwards on a moving object. A normal contact force, this is a force that acts at 90 degrees when two objects are touching. Upthrust, this is a force experienced in water as the water particles push upwards on an object. Air resistance, which is a force experienced when air particles push back on an object. Tension, which is a force in things such as ropes and wires which will pull objects. Thrust, which is a force we often describe in terms of car engines providing thrust and that will push an object forward. And lift is a force experienced by objects moving in air as the air particles push upwards on the object. Non-contact forces include gravitational force because the object doesn't have to be touching another object to experience gravitational force. Electrostatic force this is a force experienced between charged particles, but the particles do not touch to experience this force. Magnetic force, which is a force experienced between magnetic objects. Again, those magnetic objects don't have to be touching in order to experience the force. And finally, weight. Weight is something that takes into account mass and gravity. So sometimes you will see a force arrow described as weight, sometimes you might see it as gravitational force. Arrows are used to represent forces. The size of the arrow shows the size of the force and the direction of the arrow shows the direction of the force. So a force diagram might look something like this. It only shows the forces acting on one particular object. So in this case the object is the plane. So if we label some of these forces we might have thrust, which is pushing the plane forwards, provided by the engine. Drag, which is pulling the plane backwards. It would also be acceptable to call this drag air resistance, which is pulling the plane backwards. And you've got weight or gravitational force, which is pulling the plane downwards. And you've got lift which is pushing the plane upwards. Again, you may see this written as air resistance. On this tennis ball that's falling towards the earth, you might see the forces weight, or you could again see gravitational force, and air resistance pushing against the tennis ball. Now, it's likely that you'll see lots of force diagrams like this, but you may also see the arrows in different positions. For example, you may see the weight coming from the centre of the mass of the object and you may see the air resistance arrow from where the air resistance is actually acting at the surface of the ball. So don't worry too much about the two different diagrams, the most important thing is that you're naming the correct forces and using arrows. So if we look at the forces acting on the person, you've got weight pulling the person downwards towards the ground and you've also got a normal contact force which acts 
upwards on the person at the point where the person touches the floor. And this force always acts at 90 degrees to the object. Here we've got someone suspended on some ropes. We've got their weight acting downwards. Again, you could put gravitational force, but weight is better. You've got tension acting upwards on both sides, pulling the person upwards. And where they're touching each ring, you'll have a normal contact force as well. On this Jeep here, let's assume the Jeep is moving along in this direction. It would have weight acting downwards, a normal contact force acting upwards. So I've just shown this by one arrow, but you may have drawn one arrow on each of the tyres there to show where the, those forces are acting. You've got friction, which is a force experienced between two objects that are rubbing together. So between the tyres and the road, you would have friction. You've got drag that is pulling the vehicle back. Again, you might have written air resistance for that. That's also fine. And you've got thrust that's pushing the vehicle forwards. For this boat in the water, you've got weight acting downwards, up thrust, which is a force experienced by objects in water, pushing upwards. You've got thrust again from the engine pushing the boat forward and you've got drag which is acting against the motion of the boat. For non-contact forces we've already talked about weight and gravitational force a lot in the previous diagrams but you might also see diagrams for electrostatic force which is a force experienced by charged particles. So who have got positive and negative? We could draw our force arrows to show that they would be attracted together. And if you had two like charges, so two positives for example, our force diagram would show them repelling each other, like so. And finally, with magnetic force, if we had two magnets here with opposite poles, they would be attracting to each other, shown by those force arrows. And if you had two like poles, the force arrows would show them repelling each other, like so. Hi guys, if you enjoyed that last video then please click on the screen to subscribe. You can also find all my videos in one place at gccrevisionmonkey.com. If you're a teacher, check out the Key Stage 3 package at sciencesurgery.com. It contains all of the Revision Monkey videos as well as loads more Key Stage 3 resources.